your reading it was so good you are you're a whiz at narration i told the people in new york that are doing the promotion for my book that uh and no i want graham i went graham i i think <laughs> you add a level of i don't know what i would call professionalism that you know you're just probably not going to get with the average narrator i mean i i think you're way above December 3rd, Rocket Man. Who holds the Giants' single-season record for the team's most stolen bases since 1900? A. Bill North. B. Barry Bonds. C. Bobby Bonds. D. George Burns. E. Willie Mays. Answer. George Burns not the film comedian who played God in the movie God, stole a record-breaking 62 bases in 1914. That's the post-1900 franchise record, Gracie. Gary Adkins, how are things in Springfield, oh. Illinois? Oh, everything's good here, Mac. It's raining, but it's not too bad. Weather-wise, it's good, you know, temperatures. I'm what glad do you got, British that weather? That's because you're talking to me. That's what's happened. We've sent the uh, well, we've we, sent the weather down. Yeah, the we're line. very we're very much like you, except our winters are colder a little bit, but uh, more yeah. snow usually. Yeah. Well, so. we're we're talking today about your fabulous book, which you gave me the honor of narrating, the Everyday Calendar of Baseball Trivia, and it's this one is for this year for twenty twenty four. I had a great time recording this because. I've only been to two actual baseball games in my life, as you know. I saw the Minnesota Twins versus the Brewers at the old Twin Dome many years ago. And I also saw the Atlanta Braves at Turner Field, and that was against the Dodgers. They're the only two games I've been to, but I'm interested in the game. I can remember, and I think I had this conversation with you once before, um, when I used to do breakfast radio, the year when the Cubs finally won the World Series. What year would that? Would have been about 2017, am I right? 16, 17? Yeah, 2016. 2016. Right. Uh, I mean, my whole... Always, it, was yeah. morning, it was morning here. I mean, really early in the morning, like 5 a.m. or No, before that. Anyway, I'd got up to do a breakfast show on the radio, and I, I knew it was going to... I knew the game was on, and I listened to the radio broadcast, which was the first time I'd listened to baseball on the radio and it was just fabulous i can't I, I should know the name of the commentator he was just brilliant you could just see it and when they hit the home runs you hear that and then that in the wow and just the the way that the, it's a game built for radio it's a it's great radio a game actually great radio game i fell yeah. in love with it on the radio actually yeah. I, I loved playing it as a kid but actually i think the radio thing came first hearing um some some of the great announcers at, at baseball history like um, oh, uh, the Cubs announcer back in those days, Harry Carey was his name. He, mm -hmm. he was the Cardinals announcer before he became the Cubs announcers. And, and we are dead set against the Cardinals here in <laughs> Chicago area. Yeah. But, uh, but somehow he made the transition and he did a good job of, of both. But there's also the current Cubs radio announcer is one of the best. His name is Pat Hughes, and he's done would, a Would he be the guy I would have heard in 2016 then on that game, do you think? Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. bet. He was yeah. the guy, I mean, and he still is. He's been put into the Hall of Fame uh, as an announcer, which is rare. And uh, he's also got a collection of the greatest, his, historically greatest announcers in baseball history, not announcers, uh, you know, play-by-play. Yeah, yeah, commentary guys. I, yeah. I don't recall the name of it, but his name's Pat Hughes, and you could look it up. You could find a copy of it online. Well, one of the things, in one of the things about this book when I was recording it, is you'd written it so well with all the names and all the stats and everything, but of course I needed the pronunciations, and you gave me a, a few of them, but I needed to just hear them. Sometimes it's easier to hear it than to see it written phonetically. So when there was a particular player. 
that uh, and and you know you got to remember it, it, America is a nation of immigrants so they're not all called Smith and Jones you've got skis and a lot of uh, Puerto That's Rican right. uh, Spanish names and Japanese players and you know all sorts of things so I would I would put the name of the player into Google and find a video of some commentary so I could hear the commentator say the name so that I could do it but along the way I was watching, like you put the name of a player I- I- into Google. You, the, the video that comes up is a compilation of all their greatest moments in baseball. So I was watching all these yeah. highlights, you know, for the weeks that this book took to record. I was saying to my wife, said, Gee, I watched some great baseball today. She said, you're watching baseball? You're supposed to be recording books, aren't you? I said, no, no, but I've got this baseball book. But I've got to learn how to you know, pronounce the players' names. But I'm getting sucked in into all this, this stuff. So I had a great time recording. <laughs> I wondered how you did, got those names so right there. You know, it was not easy. And a lot, I think the average broadcaster doesn't do as well as you did on their American. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. The yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's hard. Well, it, it's very hard. I, I would. Well, I think I said to you when we, we first got together on this, I said, do you want me to do this in an American accent because it's the American game? And you said, no, no, British accent will sound fine. And, hey, uh, yeah. you know, I, I'm it's hoping you're right. I mean, getting the vowels correct is <laughs> it's half the battle. <laughs> and yeah. you guys do pretty, you know, you have a very good pronunciation of the vowels. I think we, we lack that here. We've gotten lazy. You know, we got away from the language center and we we've gotten a little bit <laughs> i call it lazy i think that's pretty much what it comes down to our tongue well, got lazy it was it was really great what is it that that you think because you know i'm i'm a liverpool fan soccer is is my game that's you know yeah, what do you think it is thing. yeah what I'm do you think foot. it is about sport that makes it so important to us i think it's the community connection and I think you got you guys have that in spades with Liverpool, from what I've learned about. Yeah, it's very sport. important. Yeah, and that is it, that is a connection you have with everybody you meet on the street, and you know, especially in Liverpool, but it probably everywhere in, in Britain, you probably can I run mean, into I'm, a Liverpool. I'm biased, fan. but I think there is something incredibly special about Liverpool. You know, because the city has been through some hard times. The football club itself has had some very challenging moments that continue to this day in and search for justice over things like Hillsborough. And it's all there when you go to the game and everybody's singing, you'll never walk alone. Uh, you know, it. It's it, yeah. you can feel it. it it's, an in, it's an inspirational thing. You feel it in the spirit. You feel it's something bigger than the game. It's about the city and what the game represents to a very working class um, I've heard about city. Hillsborough too. I, I think that, you know, that that's a terrible th- thing that happened there. And yeah, yeah. Getting some uh, justice is always, always. It's not there yet. Um, you know, 97 people died, way more than that were injured. And it was all because the police gave the command to open a gate and let people into an already crowded area. And still to this day, this happened in uh, 1989, and still uh, no yes. one's been held accountable for it. Uh, no one's been jailed or, you know. And there was just all sorts of it. The, the, the ground where the game was played, Hillsborough. Um, it seems is, like uh, a cover-up. Yeah, uh, yeah of course cover-up. it was a cover-up. It was a cover-up. But it was, yeah. it, 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 it's a bigger story than that. It leads into the, the class system and how football supporters are regarded in this country still a lot worse then, but still uh, football supporters are not are not given uh, you know you know rugby yeah. rugby fans rugby is a different game it comes from posh schools. Um, and yeah, so, I remember reading Woodhouse. Woodhouse wrote a lot of rugby stories, although I didn't read too much of that. But I'm aware of uh, it because I think his his main writing is so good. His comedy writing is brilliant. Yeah, um, well, so you understand right. a little bit about how the, you know, football was a working class game. Um, yeah. And, you yeah. know, and I'm from the working class, so I totally identify with football as opposed to never really thought much of, you know, rugby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, now, everyday calendar of baseball trivia. In this book, 
there are some amazing facts and stats. Yeah. How important are stats to baseball fans even today? It's, it's the lifeblood of baseball. People Is it? identify, they, re, they, they memorize and identify with how, how good their players are based on stats. And they're always improving their stats. Now they have something called advanced statistics um, where they, they do a lot more useful statistics than they used to. Do. Like RBIs are, are, are still a useful statistic, but wins for a pitcher, for example, that's up really to the gods, how many games you win and lose. It doesn't have anything to do with your talent. A lot of the best pitchers have lost 20 games in a year, and then the next year they come back and win 20 games. That means right. they're keeping their team in the game. Yeah, okay. That particular stat. If they yeah. have a lot of wins or loss, either one, it's it's a good sign that you've yeah. got a pitcher. Yeah. I mean, even when the Cubs were at their worst, I can remember they had a pitcher lose 20 games, and I thought, oh, great. We've got a, We finally got one. We got a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder... In a, I wonder, I mean, you, this will be a difficult question for you to answer, but do you think American sports fans find, spats, uh, find stats more important than fans from maybe other countries? I'm, I'm saying specifically the UK. Because I don't think we're as big on stats here. And I, I'll give you an example of that in a minute, but, but what do you think? Is sport in general or is it just baseball for stats? It's baseball, I think, although there is some of that transferring into football uh, in this country in our football, uh, but no, I don't think it is. I, maybe it's just the type of game it is. Baseball is such a slow moving game that ruminating on, on statistics about it and that kind of thing, there's plenty of time for it. Things are moving yeah. at, on the field so fast in football that you really don't have time to, to have conversations about the the stats. I mean, it's just, it, it take your mind off of what's going on. and. It, you, you really yeah. have to concentrate. You have to keep I your eye on the field. I don't, notice, I don't notice our cricket commentators here with stats. But I had an experience on the weekend. I have a friend who doesn't subscribe to one of the paid TV operators in this country. And so he watches Liverpool games. I'm not going to name this person for reasons which will become clear in a second. He watches Liverpool games uh, illegally through an illegal stream uh -huh. and we watched the last Liverpool game. We watched NBC's broadcast of it from the USA. So yeah, all the I pundits mean, and all the NBC's coverage apart that. from the game itself, which was coming from England was American. And I noticed the commentator who was British, but he was doing a commentary for America. He was putting way more stats into the game than oh, I noticed cool. British commentators do. And I wondered whether it was an American thing that Americans like stats in sport more than Brits do. Yeah, I, was, I don't know. I was going to bring know. that up, actually. I think that's a big key difference between uh, your sport and our sport. Um, yeah. Followers do here love the stats, and it comes from baseball. I, I'm convinced that none of that would, would be true if it wasn't for it, the need for it in baseball. To, uh but, you know, I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's to the well, origins of it. Well, a, the bottom and... line is stats are important to baseball fans. And that's what this book is for, is for baseball fans. And so, yeah. and yeah. now with it being an audio book too, the way that the book works, if you haven't seen this book of Gary's, is there is a different page for every day of the year. And so there are different stats on, on every day. So you, there it is. There's the, that's the print version of the book. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's now an audio book too, so you can just pick you know the day that you're on, have a quick look, and you've got something interesting. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, it, I try to put in uh, a lot of stats and a lot of things for each team, each fan base. Um, I, I counted them. I made sure I got at least ten <laughs> on each team. Oh, um, really? There's a you made sure it was balanced. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because I, I think it's, it's it's very disappointing. I've been on the receiving end of buying a book about baseball and finding almost nothing about my team back in the day when I in the 50s and 60s when I was first starting out. The Cubs were so irrelevant, of course. So. 
<laughs> that nobody, nobody bothered to put anything in there about it. But, um, and that can happen. I, I think uh, this, I also tried to put uh, source material, sources, cite the source so that people can learn more about it if they wish. Yeah. The, the research for this must have been immense then. Oh, it wasn't that hard. It would have been immense in the past, but because of Google and things like that, you can think of something and look at look it up immediately. You know, you have a general knowledge of, of who set the record, but you don't know the number. You don't know yeah. Who, yeah. those kind of stats off the top of your head for most. And how long teams. it took like, them and things like that. Yeah. 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 And I so suppose... I, this is the, the book for 2024. The book for 2025 would be a lot easier because you could recycle a lot yeah. of the 2024 stuff. Not, it's, only it's, that, it's... not only that part of it, but there's also just the calendar itself that I put it I put it into a calendar form and I had to put that calendar together because I couldn't find online a full calendar, like day, day, daily calendar like that that goes through the whole year. I couldn't find anything on Canva, for example, which is yeah. a real nice... Uh, platform I, yeah. I use it a lot but yeah. there's nothing you know easy about that but so i can take that that form and use it again next year yeah so, yeah which i will the baseball season is just starting here so there's not too much you probably want to include from april in there but I, there might be something i'll look back at really it so it, i mean the, the season does start in april doesn't it yeah, but it's so how how far into it are we right now? Um, for for anybody who's watching this in the future, which I suppose will be everyone who because it's not live, um, we're we're talking on the twenty ninth of April. How far into the season are we? About three weeks in, which is not not a whole. It's like a daily game. You play almost every day in baseball. Yeah. During the season, so you know maybe we're twenty games in or or so. Yeah. It's. It's just starting out well for for my team, the Cubs. Uh, it is not, yeah. I mean, we're we were in first place until we lost a couple of games in Boston the yeah. last few days. And they, aren't they the owners of, of the Reds? By the, the way, Red Sox, the, owner, the Boston, yeah, Boston Fenway Group owns uh, Liverpool Football Club. Yes, well done. Your knowledge is deep, Gary. <laughs> well, it's because I find it I find it fascinating. I find it interesting, and and I enjoy watching I'm actually my i think i mentioned this last time i talked to you that my school won five national championships in what we call soccer which is is your football of course yeah um so wow. i got to watch i got to watch a lot of, of it when i was in college and you've watched um, it at a good standard by the sound of things as well because that makes a difference um, yeah yeah the, it was good if, if it's not good football People get bored, and that's why I think people don't like the sport as much in America as they do. You know, I think that's the same for any sport, you know, and, and people sometimes are exposed to a sport at the wrong level. You know, when I watched the Twins and, and uh, the Atlanta Braves, I was watching, you know, two of the really good teams, and you, that's that's a good way in. If I'd have been watching it at a much, much lower level, I mightn't have been interested at all, you know? Um yeah, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I know that the Minnesota Twins don't play at the Twin Dome anymore. Do the Atlanta Braves still play at Turner Field? Does Ted Turner still own them? Is that they, he still owns them, and he's got a really nice new stadium. A new one. So um, both stadiums yeah. are now history. That's how long it is since I went. Yeah, I think it's Fulton County Stadium, but I'm not sure if it's still called that. But I think it's that's still in right. Atlanta, though, is it? And it's in Atlanta, and, and he owns them. He doesn't broadcast as many games as he used to. It, they used to have almost every game on Turner Broadcasting Network, TBN, or I think it might, I think it's TBS somehow. Yeah. Well, it was incredible when, I, you know, because it was Turner Field, so it was, it was all Ted Turner. Um, before the game, they had the big, the Jumbotron screen, and they would, uh, before the game came on, a guy came on, the weatherman came on, and did the weather for the stadium for the game. I mean, told you oh, that it was that it's you know there's a little bit of cloud around now, and he had this map, and he's doing the whole proper weather. It was a TV weatherman from you know CNN or whatever <laughs> Turner's 
channel was at the time and and, and he did the full on weather broadcast and then he finished it with Go Braves. You know, That's it's pretty- just <laughs> incredible. You know, they, you know, Liverpool doesn't even have a video sp- uh, Jumbotron at uh, Anfield. We don't have that. We only got a scoreboard about 20 years ago, I think. You know, it's well, just- we, we need that here again for the statistics. They want to be able to put up what, what each hitter's uh, you know, doing today. Like if he's three for four, it, it will say that in the batting, current batting average, everything goes up there on the Jumbotron. So, uh, even Wrigley Field, which is a very traditional, you know, didn't even get lights until the 80s. Is that um, right? Yeah. And it's over 100 years old. It actually dates back to the American Association of Baseball, which predates the American League, I believe. Uh, anyway, it was built for that league. And the Cubs didn't use it. It was a team called the uh, Wales the, the Chicago Wales, um, noting the size of the city, I guess they were calling themselves the Wales. And was it so. called Wrigley Field back then as well? Oh, my gosh. Yes, it was. It was called uh, – no, it wasn't. It was originally called Wigman Park. Wigman wow. was the name of the owner of that, that team. Right. Uh, and he, he was an interesting guy. He did a, a really great job, obviously. He cared about the uh, – stadium being of quality and he did build a very high quality field which still holds up today i mean it's still still fun place to go but it's very intimate it doesn't have the, all the amenities of baseball parks today which are kind of like little cities if you go to yankee stadium you're in it you're in a city i mean you've got every amenity you could get a haircut there if you wanted to you could go shopping have some restaurants or several restaurants in, in Yankee Street. None of that's true in Wrigley. They, you know, they've got some fast food type things you can get, but there's, you know, and that's fine. What, what do you need to, to go? You don't actually need to make a whole day of it at the ballpark. Yeah. You could, but. You and know. tradition is, a, you know, is an important thing with the history, the history yeah. of a club too. And if the, you know, there's a lot of, football clubs in this country have moved to newer grounds because I think for part of it was they found that their ground was in the inner city and the city got bigger and the real estate became more expensive so they sold it and they moved to a ground just on the outskirts of town where the land's cheaper you know and they'd have a new but some of them you know I've been to Derby and Middlesbrough I've been to Southampton you know I've been to some of these newer grounds and they do, there is something missing. You know, Liverpool is still, although we've expanded the ground and built all, compared to when I went as a kid, all four sides are new now, are, are different grandstands to what they used to be. They're not the ones we used to go. Yeah. And, and, you know, two ends of the ground used to stand up. There weren't even any seats. But, oh, um, wow. yeah, uh, but um, it's, it's in my lifetime, I've seen that change, but it's still Anfield. It's still in that part of the city it's still you know in liverpool l4 it's still there and i think some of these teams that have moved their location to a brand new the very the new stadiums are very soulless they they really are missing something that's something what the missing cardinals the cardinals did the same thing here in baseball they they built a new stadium in the and a lot of teams did in the 60s around here and they were really soulless concrete stadiums that just you know they had they were round they were you know unex, uninteresting where the ball would hit the wall you, you know it was not a matter of it would take a funny bounce because it wasn't going to you knew exactly what was going to happen but at wrigley there's a, you know they've got vines in the outfield that catch the ball they, you know people have to, <laughs> they have to be on their toes the outfielders <laughs> can run into a, jut, a jutting part of the wall and knock themselves cold if they're not uh, you know especially right field in Wrigley is considered like the hardest outfield position. Wow. In at that ground. And does that give them a, a hometown, a, a home ground advantage? That's just a little oh, bit. Yeah. Cause it's all yeah, about because different you've gotta small have, differences. You've got to have a good fielder in right field and the Cubs do that. They, they realize that and they get you know, like some really good out, outfielder always. Yeah. In right yeah. And center's not, it's mostly just difficult because you got a wide expanse to cover. You got to, you know, 
to go to the left or right well because it's it's a big outfield. Yeah. It, I mean, Wrigley has a deep outfield. It's hard to hit the ball out of um, in center fields. It's it's lo- and it's longer down the line than most baseball parks. It's, right. It's, it's right. just got a lot of ind- idiosyncrasies. As does Fenway. Fenway's got the green monster, which is like a thirty-foot high wall in left field. So mm-hmm. you you know you're more likely to get a double than a home run if you hit it out towards left field. Right. That's the, so these are the things that make it different, make it unique. Yeah. Wow. But you know you look at then you think back. Well, there's been some great hitters in, in Fenway, and Ted Williams is the most famous of those who. You know, he hit over 500 home runs, but he served two terms in service in World War II and the Korean War and altogether missed like five or six years of baseball. He probably would be the all time home run king in baseball had he not served so many wow. years. He, he was wow. a, a pilot. He was a fighter pilot in the wars. So uh, what a he had, proper all American hero. As a he baseball superstar been, <laughs> and as yeah. a military hero too, war a, a fighter pilot no less, glamour. Yeah, he he really was also the the guy who wrote the book on hitting. His his book on hitting is the best. Yeah, on how to get a baseball. So, uh, you know, he obviously had good eyesight because he could if you can hit at a high rate. They they tested some of the great baseball hitters and the past like it ernie banks had i instead of 2020 vision i think he had you know like 30 you know 30 30 or something he had something ridiculous some amazing ability so so to to hit big it is more about the vision than the muscular side of it it's huge i've always thought why don't the teams put more money into um testing their players eyesight because that's yeah that's also big for a hand, hand-eye coordination yeah catching it yeah. yeah yeah catching the ball and throw it even throwing it to the right spot i mean yeah because you got to be quick because once it's once they start running and you're trying to get them there before you're trying to get to that base get the ball to that baseman before the batter gets i mean it's got to be it's, that's when it really moves fast yeah 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 absolutely and yeah uh, I, I really, I really love that about baseball. That uh, it's, you know, it gets, it gets exciting. It's slow moving for hours, and then it, there's always a time when it get, heats up and when everything happens at once. There's, yes, you know, and there's people running here and there, and people on bike. People are just great. Just, just, yeah. and that was a lot of what I was watching because I'm watching these super highlights of you know big hits and outs and stuff, and I, just to get the name of the player. But it's like, wait a minute, and it, wow, you know, <laughs> just great, yeah. you know. That yeah. was part, they, part they of the fun of doing things. the book. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like bas- basketball is a little bit like uh, high, you know, it's a fast game like football. Yeah, the pace is about the same, isn't it, through the whole game? Yeah. It dips a little, but the rest of the time is pretty consistent. But baseball, yeah. there's a baseball. lot of time for contemplation and tactics and moving the fielders around, uh, you yeah. know, when the batter it changes. Was built and in the, an agrarian society built, built baseball, and it was, you know, reflecting, you know, the slow-moving pace. And nobody was in a hurry, and, and um, they knew there would be action, plenty of action, plenty of chance, and... People still play a lot of softball here. Softball is kind of the equivalent of. Uh, it's a bigger ball, isn't it? They play with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a bigger. You can got sixteen. Some of them are sixteen-inch ba- uh, baseballs, uh, so- softballs, and uh, anyway, that's something that people do. Regular guys play, you know, softball here. It's it's the all-American type of game. They don't play baseball. Kids play baseball, but once you you know once you grow up, you you you're throwing the ball underhand. Yeah, you know, and it's easier and, to hit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but those ninety-eight mile an hour fastballs are something that you know really <laughs> the average guy would not have a chance with that anyway. So, so of it, all it, the trivia in everyday calendar of baseball trivia, if you had to pick one as your favorite. What piece of trivia would be the one that really gets you going? My favorite would be the Hack Wilson RBI record. 
Right. And it, it dovetails with the American League record for RBI, runs batted in RBIs. Um, the American League record is held by Babe Ruth's uh, teammate, Lou Gehrig. Yeah. Gehrig was called the Iron Horse. He, he set the record for playing the most consecutive games. He, he never missed a game. And he was from New York City, had, you know, I shouldn't get off on that. I should talk about Heck Wilson, but actually, Gehrig is the greater player. There's no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Um, the, but his record was like 186. For, Gehrig's for Gehrig. record was. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. he was right there with the, the National League record, the baseball record is 190 by Heck Wilson, who was a, a man of small stature, but he, he was kind of comical looking. His, he, you know, he's like, very narrow at the bottom and went up to a sh huge shoulders and he was a really strong character really strong guy he hit also he hit 56 home runs the national league record for home runs until so what era was runs. this what time what time are we talking it was, about it was during uh babe ruth's oh period, really? a little, late, little later in here in his career but I, I mean they played against each other in the world series more than once the Yankees and the Cubs. The Cubs would have a couple more World Series championships in the, in the 20s had they not uh, faced the Yankees. The, <laughs> right. the greatest team of all time, the 1927 Yankees, are widely considered the best baseball team ever assembled because it had Ruth and Gehrig mainly. I mean, those two characters just drove in so many runs and hit 60 home runs. You know, it was nothing for... Ruth had 50 home runs. He he did it a lot. Did they play more games then? Did that make stats easier to get no, big numbers? No, they made, they made that with less games. They actually only played a 154-game wow. season compared to 162 today and later. Wow. You know, since, and that record has stood since then? Uh, it did. It did until... Um, well, the the national, I mean, the record for RBI still stands. Yes. Yeah. But the the home run records were broken in the '90s and and later by Bar Barry Bonds, for example. It, yeah. Over seventy home runs in a season, and there's yeah, a lot he of appears quite a bit there. in the book, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it, there's a lot of controversy about that because he was suspected of using steroids. A lot of the players who broke the records in that time period were either found to use steroids or they were included in reports that suggested, not just suggested, but found that they had used. Right. Steroids. Okay. So, so their stats get an asterisk, don't they? Yeah, they do. And I don't think that's uh, completely right. I, I think they, for the era they were in, it was still hard. I mean, the thing is, Barry Bonds would have been in the Hall of Fame even if he hadn't hit home runs. Right. Later okay. in it, he was a great yeah. player all around and hit for high average and got a lot of doubles in his early years. But you know, yeah, I'm not saying that I don't think it's lesser achievement to have done it on steroids. I'm just saying, you know, he did it and other players in the era did it too. And, you know, that was the year it was. So it's just Ooh, controversial. He, he, Controversial. Yeah, You're not shying away from it. You're not sitting on the good. fence. <laughs> no, it's it's good to be controversial. Actually, I, I always think, you know, we have some discussions here. Let's see what what people think. <laughs> a lot of people will take exception to that and will be mad as a hornet about it. So, <laughs> yeah. But I don't care. I just have to call them the way I see them. I think it's baseball will probably never recognize uh, him in the Hall of Fame. For example, Barry Bonds. Right. Okay. Because of that. Yeah. Which I get you know, that though. Yeah. I think I think you know something yeah. as prestigious as the Hall of Fame. Um, they have to be careful who they admit. I think because these, you know, these are going to be inspirational players and and everything. But as far as straight stats go, numbers are numbers, aren't they? So yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think it's yeah. got to recognize these guys are uh, deserving. They, had, yeah. they still hit the ball. The thing is, if you hit home run, it means you've connected with it very well. Very, It would have been a double if it didn't go out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The way those now, guys the, hit them. The thing yeah. I, I, I like as well is, and, and I didn't see it until near the end of the, um, when we were doing the audio book, 
is the cover um, art because the cover art on the original thing I saw was different. The the original print book, the cover art that you went out with that the is on the audio book is fabulous. Where did that come from? That I got help with that. See that the, the original one was just some cover art that I I you know got myself. Whereas I I hooked up with a New York uh, marketing company and they they did that cover for me. Nice I agree. Job. With, I agree. Yeah. I, that 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 one's smooth. It just they says know when you look at it, it just says not just baseball, but it says baseball history. It just says that in the way that it's because it's like a painting, you know. It's it, yes, it just it, is. it just is the perfect cover for the for the audio book, and I'm guessing that's the the cover for the current print book then as well. Now is it? Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. It, it, everywhere except on Amazon, I think that we've got that that cover being used. And that's definitely you know, the one on Audible. Yeah. Half dozen other booksellers. Yeah. 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 Have that as the cover on the print it's, book, it's, too. So. It's wonderful. It really is good. I like it. Yeah. And yeah, how did you, you find the process of turning this one into an audio book? Because we've done audio books before, but nothing like this. Um, the ones we've done before have been uh, fiction books before. This is this is a book yeah. that is all facts. This is this is a book yeah. that isn't based on a true story. This is the truth. The numbers don't lie. So uh, yeah. how did well, you how did you find was, the experience of this one? I was afraid a little bit about the pronunciation I thought that was the hard part I thought all along this is going to be hard look at these names these I couldn't even pronounce half of the names I mean even yeah. the ones who are famous players that I hear it now you would have that you would have that advantage because you're hearing them all the time see when I heard you know yeah. Albert Pujols it was the first time I'd heard that name you know oh wow uh, really that's amazing yeah, that's, yeah. That's, baseball that's, is not it's baseball stars I mean we've heard of yeah, Lou Gehrig we've heard of, Big Ruth, Ruth we've heard of, Joe DiMaggio because of Marilyn Monroe. But there's not many others, you know, that the names are known in the UK. Um, yeah. And so well, I was really going at it from scratch. Expected. Yeah. We're trying to, I think the baseball is trying to get some, some more uh, viewership in England yeah. and uh, Great Britain. Uh, are they playing any games over here? Because the NFL play at least one game over here a year. Yes, actually, last year the Cubs played the Cardinals in in London in really? Wembley. Wembley? Was yeah. it Wembley? Yeah, it was at yeah. Wembley, and um, we split a two game series with the Cardinals. Um, it is a great place to play baseball too. That stadium, is, of course, the stadium, in in probably in the whole world, is probably one of the, the greatest stadiums in the world. Yeah, it's it's a new stadium now. For a while, for a while, we didn't have a national stadium, and the England yeah. football team went on tour and they played at different clubs' grounds. They played at Liverpool one game, at least one game. They've had some success lately too. The the English football team. I mean, yeah, they're doing okay, it's been... but it's been a while. They haven't won the World Cup since 1966, and when they did, it was at Wembley. Funnily enough, but the old Wembley, Remember same you location. Played, uh, you played. Uh... Germany, I remember West that. West Germany, yeah. 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 In the, yeah the, what, what time was, when did that happen? 1966. That yeah. Uh -huh. So Pele was, was 17. And in fact, in the qualifying games, Pele played in Liverpool. He played at Everton's ground. Uh, they oh played, God. who did they play? I know Korea played at, at Everton, but I'm not sure if that's the one that Brazil played in. But Pele played, I think he was 17, and he played in Liverpool in 1966. Wow. So Pele, the greatest royalty. player of all time, has played in yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, that's royalty. That is. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, like Messi. Today. Messi's probably the closest. In he would time. be of the, of the living legends. Yeah, he would be. Because you always have one, you know, for a while there it was Maradona, wasn't it? And uh, Yeah, exactly. He'd be Messi yeah, at the moment, I would, I would think. But Pele was always everybody's favorite. For some reason, there was just something was about him. Really fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, he played in but the U.S. for a while, didn't he? Didn't he play for New York yeah. Cosmos for a while in the yeah. Yeah. early early to mid seventies? Yeah. And uh, the close, I was going to say, the closest that I've seen. Of course, I don't watch nearly as much as you do, of course. But I really like uh, Mo Salah. I mean, oh, he's great. Look at his. 
you know, his highlights, look his name up on Google and you see, yeah. wow, this guy really, really can handle the yeah. ball, can dribble it. And yeah, man, I, I'm amazed at the way he sets people up too for, you know, yeah. goals. Yeah. Now, I know there was does. some controversy around him though with the coach. He and the coach had a fight. <laughs> Yeah, they had some words, but but today the news is saying that he's committed to Liverpool and he's about to sign uh, a new contract, which will be under a new manager, and we don't know who that will be yet. So he is committed to Liverpool. He loves it at Liverpool, and Liverpool loves him too. He's the Egyptian king. He's got his own song that the cop, uh, which is our end of the ground, where you know, uh, sing about the Egyptian yeah. king, and you know, he's just oh, really? he's mo. Super. Oh yeah, yeah. It was. It's based on the old. There was a song by James. I don't know if it was a hit in the U.S. And the the song was called "Sit Down." And the song went "Sit Down, Sit Down, Sit Down." But uh, it's been changed to Mo Salah, Mo Salah, running down the wing. Oh, what, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Egyptian king. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. That's, that's great. <laughs> Would you say, but what, what position does he play? I know he's, he's a wing. He's, he's centre forward, but he plays out slightly wide towards the left yeah. usually. But no, he comes down the right side as well. But he's yeah, he's a he's a he's a striker, but he plays he plays quite wide. Which yeah, which yeah, means I if someone like usually can find him on the screen by looking wide out there. He's towards the corners, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'll uh, and he'll just do but, things, and you think, how did he do that? Just great, yeah. But didn't he didn't start against one of the teams? Yeah, the last game, and that was, I think, yeah. you know, um, Klopp didn't pick him. Probably... Yeah, he brought him on, but when he brought him on, that's when the trouble started because, um, oh, yeah. yeah, it didn't, yeah. Uh, yeah but, that's a uh, shame because I know that the reason they probably had him falling out a little bit was because they both wanted it so bad. They both, yeah. and you want that. I mean, those yeah. kind of things happen. They always happen in sport. I see that in baseball where the manager will have a – you know, and then the next week or two, they're they're bound, and this was bound to happen too. I'm sure that Klopp and Salah will, you know, say, "Let's oh, forget about it." You know, Gary, it happens in baseball. <laughs> I mean, I watched all those videos. There was managers' names I had to pronounce as well, and there was a few tantrums. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some that's doozies. Part of the manager's, the manager's job is just is... going crazy <laughs> at the umpires. Just yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, my first my first cover was going to be a manager kicking dirt on the umpire's <laughs> hand leg, which is really really a shame that I couldn't have, have come up with one that worked for that because it, I do think that's uh, iconic. That's iconic in baseball that the manager, you know, just screams at the umpire and loses loses and all. Throw control. something, you know. It might be a towel or a just you just throw something. <laughs> yeah, and even though it it may not matter at Those all, I mean, they yeah. they're doing it to uphold their their team's uh, you know good feeling, yeah. Be, you know, feel like hey, he's he's watching my back. That manager has my back. Yeah, and it's the cool. fans love it. Yeah. You know, the, yeah, the officials of, the of sports don't don't like it at all, but the fans love it. They because sport, when it comes down to it, it's about passion. The fans have the passion for their team. And when they That's see so that true. same degree of passion demonstrated by their manager or their coach, they go, look, he's like us. He gets yeah. it. You know? yeah. Yeah. The fans love yeah, it. As much as we do. Yeah, so I hope does. it doesn't get completely cleaned out of the game by these officials who don't like it because it's part it's part of what it's part of the of the passion and the the emotion. Uh, that, yeah. that sport drives because it it's, it's completely it. It illogical, does. isn't it? I mean, J it, Jerry it Seinfeld is. used to do a bit and he was talking about sports teams, how sports teams in your country will change cities and yeah. obviously they That's, change players. Yeah. And, you know, he goes, so in the end, what is it you're cheering for? And he goes, it's the uniforms. He says, we're out there cheering for laundry. <laughs> 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 And it's a great bit, but you know, in the end, what well, I mean, you know, Liverpool have, good, haven't moved, but players change all the time. But that you know, reminds me, I think it would be interesting. I've always thought, wouldn't it be interesting if you were starting a, a sports league? Say, I wanted to start a new baseball league. It'd be interesting to have all Liverpool 
players or all Chicago players, you know, well, just who are locally are from the area. From yeah. 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 I mean, you're not, gonna, you're not going to get the best players because they're already gone. They're already playing for the major league baseball, Yeah, but you could start a league. I think that would get a good following because, you know, people would like to root on their local high school heroes. Well, it, or, well it's interesting. You know, I lived in Australia for a long time for uh, nearly seven years and well, when I lived in New South Wales, the big sport there in the winter was rugby league. So it's different to rugby union. You only play, you know, rugby union side has 15 players. Rugby league side only has 13. And huh. when the ball, it, you only get six tackles. It's a bit, it's more like uh, NFL. You only get six tackles, which okay. are like downs. And after that, there's either a handover or you've got to punt it or, or whatever it is. Um, um and yeah. there's drop goals and all the rest of it. It's 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 probably the closest. It's much closer to NFL rugby league than I think rugby union is. Rugby union, when you get tackled, you just have to release the ball. Anyway, rugby league is big in Sydney and in the state of New South Wales and in the state of Queensland. They were the two big states. It's national now, but at the time it was really only played seriously in. New South Wales and Queensland, these two states. Victoria, they played Australian rules. But New South yeah. Wales and Queensland was where it was played. So every year they had a game called the State of Origin game. And the, what the State of Origin was, you played for either Queensland or New South Wales. Not your club, because the, the, in, in oh. the States, there are all the clubs. I mean, I, my, the team I used to follow were the North Sydney Bears. But... And the, um, we would, we would, hate, we hated Manly, who were our local rivals. But also, you know, we, we, there was lots of teams within Sydney and lots of teams within Queensland. But the state of yeah. origin game, and I think they played three of them every season. You were picked to play for either New South Wales or Queensland based on whether that was your state of origin. So it might be oh. your state of origin because you were born in that state, but it might be your state of origin because the first time you played for a rugby league club was based in that state. So it was ah, Queensland. I like that. Queensland. So there is, Australia, I think, I'm pretty sure they still have state of origin, and it was a very, very brutal, passionate encounter, the state of origin games. They were yeah, massive. Yeah. Um, so there's, that's probably imagine. the closest to, to, to what your dream is, is what they have yeah. in Australia was the state of origins. Maybe with so 50 states, work. you could do it a state of origin work. in yeah. a state of origin baseball series where there are 50 teams, similar. one from each state, and it's the state of origin of those players in those states. Don't sure, know. That would Maybe that work. would work. It would. I think that's <laughs> the way to go. I think that. <laughs> yeah, I'd I like mean, to some states would also... have an unfair advantage, but still. And also that could get some of the money out of the game. You know, it's a big, you know, money is, is, it's so expensive to go to a baseball game these days. Is and, it? and I think, what that, does it, what does yeah, it cost? The average guy, oh, it's probably, I think they, you know, figured it up. It's hundreds of dollars to go yeah. to a baseball game. And that's absurd because you have a game every day. So, yeah. you, you know, the average guy can't go to that many games. No, a season so ticket would be out of reach of most people, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, and that's not right. Yeah. This is, you know, America's pastime, so uh, I, I really would like to see somebody come up with a way to bring down the prices for the fans, and that might be the way to do it, a state of origin league. Yeah. It wouldn't have to be all 50 states to start with. And no. It could even be, you know. You East Coast regional, and West Coast. And, yeah. 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 And, exactly. yeah. and uh, Midwest. East Coast, <laughs> West Coast, Midwest, the South. There's four. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you know, and you make can a have small towns represented in there, too, because a state, you know, the big, you, you draw from a lot of population. It would be it would be fun. And it, it, and it wouldn't have to cost a lot to set up a league like that. There's baseball. It could be a good preseason curtain raiser to the, yeah. to the main oh, season. <laughs> Major League Baseball would probably want to co-opt it, so they probably would put some money into it if it started, if it got a little success. That's, a, that's how each league got started, by the way. The American League was kind of an afterthought. It started in 1900. For those who don't know, we should explain, because of the British people watching this particular, there are actually two leagues yeah, run with leagues. slightly different rules. I think designated hitter rules that's are slightly true. different in American League to National League, aren't they? 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're, just but just they back to, to back to where you were. I was just bringing people up to speed. So so when yeah. when did the league, how did the, the league start? Oh, the American League started in 1900. The National League in 18, 1868, I think, something like that. So, I mean, it was right after the Civil War that baseball got started. But the American League, it was just um, a, a lot of the success of baseball, you know, led to owners deciding, hey, we should have our own league. We, you know, we need to. And they wanted to play different, a different style and things. So, I mean, it. It made sense. And that to this day, there are still some, like you say, rules that are only in the American League. And and they even did things differently, like they would wear their uh, chest protectors, the umpires on the outside. They'd have this big, uh, huge black... Uh, Love heart. <laughs> yeah, heart. It was like, you know, their head would be <laughs> the only part that's exposed, basically. And they're wearing that face mask there too so that was the american the national league umpires had the that under their clothes they had the chest protector under the clothing so i mean even a thing like that it, but also they had designated hitter rule in the american league whereas the pitchers had to bat in the national league until a couple seasons ago oh that's baseball, changed now okay yeah that's changed right. trying to adapt in fact they've also put a time clock on how long it takes between pitches which i'm okay. all for because yeah. Baseball does move very slowly, and it's too slow for modern viewers. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Well, TV Funny. gets to put more commercials in, though. I suppose <laughs> that's, that's true. Good, good for they revenue. It still takes a while because of that. That's true, <laughs> and that's true in football too. I mean, if you go to a football game, you have to wait for the commercial breaks. You you're sitting there in the stands, and you're having to wait a long time between <laughs> the last play and the. Uh, you know, well, I was in. I was in. One year I was in Memphis and it was the day of the Super Bowl and we were staying in, uh, what's the hotel with the ducks? The Peabody. I don't know if you know oh, Memphis. Yeah. There's a famous hotel with, they have ducks swim, swim in the fountain and it's cool. Yeah. Anyway, we yeah. were staying, we were staying there and the, I mostly was, know Beale Street. I mostly know Beale Street in Memphis. Beale I mean, Street was <laughs> fabulous. I found that the yeah. buskers on Beale Street playing blues were better than the ones in the bar than the acts in the, in the bars. Oh yeah, I thought so too. And Great I think that's city. true in New Orleans to some degree, except for the Yeah, the I've been jazz. been to New Orleans a couple of times as well. Been on um what's the street there? Bourbon Street. Yeah. Bourbon Street, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, we were in we were in Memphis and it was the Super Bowl. And uh, I said to Julie, I says, come on, we'll go out, we'll go to a sports bar and we'll watch it in a sports bar. So we went down to this sports bar and it's like minutes before the kickoff and there's hardly anybody in there. And I said to Julie, I said, I thought this was like America's biggest sport and game and this is a sports bar. Shouldn't this place be just full to the rafters? So I said, and yeah. it was just, it was the atmosphere was rubbish. I said, oh, come on, we'll go back and we'll watch it in the hotel bar. At least we know there's going to be some, you know, captive traveling salesman or something in there. You know, it's going to be a bit, that's how dead it was. We went to the hotel bar oh, to watch. So we went to the <laughs> hotel bar and the atmosphere was better in there. And we were talking to some people, um, Americans who needed to explain the game to us to help us out. And I said, tell me, I, we were just at a sports bar. It was empty. Why is it empty? And they said, because Super Bowl Sunday's a family day. And then it all made sense. Everyone's with their families. And then it all made yeah, sense yeah, why the yeah, Janet Jackson incident was such an outrage to America. That was a yeah, family day. Because you know, up, yeah. up until that point, I thought, why are they so bothered about the Janet Jackson thing? It was at a football match. Isn't that like a blokey thing anyway? Not the Super Bowl. <laughs> no. That's, it all made yeah. sense. All made sense. Yeah. Yeah. Up, that's up exactly until then, why that happened that way. That's exactly what, you know, people wouldn't care. They would actually think it was fine <laughs> ordinarily. I mean, your average fan enjoys that sort of thing let's see yeah. or any pop video isn't far off that anyway you know yeah. it wasn't it wasn't like yeah. you know um it did not mother teresa did it you know standard. it was Tana jackson <laughs> yeah that it, that's kind of that's yeah. pretty good explanation that people probably would never realize that there was a, a reason for that but that's springfield where i'm from you know people 
they have parties at home too. I mean, you don't see as much nightlife here as you see um, because on it's, Super Bowl Sunday, people have yeah. friends or family over the house. That's what's yeah, you know, that's yeah. what we do for. So it's almost like, like Christmas. Or something. Yeah. you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a celebration. Well, only, yeah, only once or twice in my life have I gone out to watch a Super Bowl. I and right. go to a friend's house or you know watch it at home. So. And That's is baseball true. similar? Is the World Series is that a family thing, or is oh, that just yeah? It is nice? just the same exactly, even even more so. I think it's not as important though because it, it's a seven game series, so one game is you know not as important unless it's the seventh game it comes. Yeah, if it comes down to that, and if it's regionally interested fan base, that makes a difference too. It has to be for people to care about this the World Series around here. We don't. Right. Okay. And that's because baseball is not, it's no longer the most popular sport in America. Uh, you know, football has long since surpassed it in terms of viewership and the money that's made by the owners and all of that. But, but football's in the winter, though. So baseball's still got the summer to itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's got it all to itself. And yeah. During that time, it is the king. But, and it's an everyday sport. So. There's always coverage of it every every day. You could flip on the TV and see um, who won today on the news, or you could probably see part of the game. I didn't realize it was played every day, but that makes a lot of sense. The amount of times I've been to the States and I get off the plane and I'm in the airport and I'm walking through the airport and you see the bar and there's always a game on, on uh, yeah, in the bar, exactly. in the airport. And that's what, and there's, like I, I and that's play cool. played every day. At the pool hall, there's always a baseball game on. So. <laughs> <laughs> That makes sense. Well, it's yeah. been fabulous talking to you, Gary. It was fabulous doing the book. It was a real window into some I a piece enjoyed, of America. Uh, I enjoyed to, your reading. It was so good. You are you're a whiz at narration. I told the people in New York that are doing the promotion for my book that, uh, and no, I want Graham. I want Graham. I I think <laughs> you had a level of. I don't know what I would call professionalism that, you know, you're just probably not going to get with the average narrator. I mean, I, I think you're way above. Well, thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. But it was a wonderful book to do. It was so well written and so easily spaced out. But, you know, and the problem ended up being an advantage. The problem was pronouncing the players' names, but for me to then go on to YouTube and watch the players play and listen to the commentators and the commentary and the way that the whole thing is put together really helped me get the vibe of it. So that when, I mean, I'm only reading out stats and trivia and whatever, but to, to get a feel yeah. for it, that really, really helped me out. And I had a wonderful, cool. wonderful time doing it. I'm glad. I wonder if uh, people would be interested in using it in... Uh... They they have trivia nights at, at bars around here and and I wonder if anybody's interested. This might be a good book to use for uh, perfect. Quiz, quiz, do they it call would it quiz? Be perfect tonight? to make quiz yeah. questions from. Perfect because yeah. it is it is it is written history. You know when they talk about the history books. Well, this literally is a history book. This is going to be yeah. there after everybody's gone. This will still be it comes there. Comes from the heart too. It comes from yeah. the heart because I love baseball. I wanted to do this. That's the reason I still love it. And because I, I had my most success playing it. It was the game I played when I was in grade school. And I, I hit a ball and it went up on the roof of the school. It was one of those typical American schoolyards where the ball, the outfield is, is the wall of the school, you know. And uh, that was just, I mean, I had my moment in the sun. It's like <laughs> less than 15 minutes uh, of fame. But... <laughs> Now, but if it had I come off the roof, could somebody have still caught you off the roof, or would you? Would you? Would uh, it still no, home that run? would have. We considered that a home run. The ground okay. rules were were set. So, because <laughs> I only say that because in Australia, kids play cricket in the backyard, and the rule there yeah. of backyard cricket, it's an unwritten rule that everyone seems to subscribe to, is if you hit the ball onto the roof of the house because you're playing in the backyard. If it oh, comes wow. off the yeah. roof, you can be caught out, but only if you're caught out left-handed. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a six. I, I like yeah. that. We had <laughs> things like that at home when we played. We would hit them on the roof, and we would have a we'd have a local rule for every house on the neighborhood. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I bet. Yeah. 
So a lot of them, you could catch it off the roof. That's true. Or off the but, wall. You could people, catch it off people, the wall and it'd be an out. People play yeah. baseball in the street there, which I discovered uh, quite by accident. I was in, it was actually when I was in Minneapolis. The last day I got into the taxi to go to the airport. And the driver uh -huh. said, like, the scariest thing a taxi driver can say to you. He said, you know, this is my first day as a taxi driver. And I uh, said to him, yeah. well, don't worry. You've got one of the easiest fares going. I'm going to the airport, you know. And he yeah. still got lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But we walked, we ended up in suburban Minneapolis and there were kids playing baseball in the street and they had to get off the street while we went by. That's how far off the main road we were. Kids were playing that's baseball great. in the street. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great story. That says it all. <laughs> that shows how much people, kids still play baseball like that. And that, that used to be, you know, iconic in New York City even. You'd see pictures of kids playing stickball, they called it, and they'd be in the street and, uh, you know, I don't know exactly how that works, but a lot of great baseball players played that way and were they started that. You know, when they would do a biography movie about them, they they'd show them playing stickball, like wow. Willie Mays and wow. whoever. So. All right then. Well, if you'd like to well, get the audio book of Everyday Calendar of Baseball Trivia by Gary Adkins. In the link, if you're watching this on YouTube, there is a link to it in the info down there. If you're watching this embedded somewhere, we'll have a quick look at the YouTube version if you want to get it. But if you just put Gary Adkins in baseball trivia and Google, it'll take you to Amazon or anywhere you can you can download books and audio books. You get the book version, the audio book version. Is a Kindle version too? Is a ebook version? Yeah, that's there. Uh, I, don't think, I think there is. I think there yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Whatever there is, uh, you'll find it. What's next for you, Gary? I know you've got a music education book coming up soon, don't you? Yeah, I, I'm an editor, and I uh, re retired from the Illinois Association of School Boards uh, about four years ago. I've got a, a book coming out on oh, a form of music education called Koda the Kodali Method, and it's very popular in, in Britain, I understand. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, it's going to be called um, I Got Music, based on the Gershwin song, um, I, I Got Rhythm was the yeah. name of that song. But the second verse in it is, I Got Music, yeah, which is what this is about. More. I want people to think, yeah. you got this. or That's kind of the implication there. Is, and, right. and we're trying to make it easier and to help also to make it easier for people who are good at music to get a little better. You can you know, look up concepts. It's got an index at the back for concepts. It isn't out yet, but... I mean, we know what it's going to be, and it's. It, I think it's going to be pretty good. So Great. I hope so everybody still, will, will look for that. It's called I Got Music. So, and you're still putting the finishing you, touches yeah. to that. So personally, what's yeah. next for you? What's the next big challenge in your life coming up? Well, I'm probably going to do a 2025 book of baseball trivia. Right, yeah. Because it's a natural, and I've already got, as I say, I've already got the calendar. I just have to slightly tweak it to for 2025 right? but most of it's made so <laughs> that was a big part of putting the book together originally was on canva making this calendar yeah I'll with, bet. Uh, yeah you know it's got it's got a baseball in it and a baseball hitter you know icon in it so so it had to be done just so i, I hope it brilliant will. i hope people will like it anyway the book is called the everyday calendar of baseball trivia by gary adkins Always good to talk to you, Gary. Thanks once good again for choosing me to Graham. do your book. Yes, good luck to the Reds. Thank Red you. All hey. over, and good luck with your blog, Red All Over. It's actually John yes. Pierman. He's the he's been the editor for twenty eight years. John Pierman, it's his, yeah. and I've known him for about twenty of those years. And uh, yeah, so we do it together. But John Pierman is podcast. Red All Over. I should have said podcast. That's what you you got a podcast with with John, right? Yeah, yeah. And we do it on YouTube and it goes on it's called, LinkedIn. What's it called? Everything. What's it called again? It's Red called, it's called the, the fanzine that John's been selling at, at Anfield for twenty eight years is called Red All Over the Land. And so what we title. do on yeah. what we do on YouTube is Red All Over YouTube. So <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like it. I'm gonna have to subscribe and then I'll then I'll know the name the next time I talk to you. Really? I look forward that, to that. And Look forward again, to that Grant. too, Gary. Thank you. And if you're in the UK, if the Cubs play at Wembley again, we'll have to go. Yeah. We'll have All to right. go. That sounds good. Let's yeah. do. I'll plan on that. Okay. Cheers, Gary. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers man. Bye, Gary.